Good day and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the Civil War taking place inside of the former state of Ethiopia. And before I start, I want to give a, a very quick basic rundown into the origins of the conflict and the, uh, the, the, the three main parties that are currently fighting in the, uh, the ongoing war. Well, there's, there's actually more than three parties, uh, but, but I would, th this, this video would take some time to try and explain that. But obviously you can do your own uh, due diligence and research the ongoing war yourself. But basically the origins of the conflict started back in, uh, uh, 2020, November of 2020, when the central government of Ethiopia, led by uh, Abiy Ahmed, uh, took it upon himself to cancel the, uh, the, the elections, the democratic elections taking place, regional democratic elections taking place in the Tigray region under the auspice of COVID-19. But again, there was a much more sinister uh, plan behind the cancellation of those regional elections. Well, the uh, Tigray region went ahead and 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 disobeyed the uh, the the rule of uh, and the edicts of of a Ahmed and went ahead with their normal democratic processes inside of the Tigray region. And at that point, uh, the uh, the Abiy Ahmed regime uh, declared the uh, current and most uh, popular uh, political party in the Tigray region uh, a basic enemy of the state, a terrorist entity, and then launched a quote-unquote law enforcement operation uh, to uh, dismantle the Tigray region. Now, that law enforcement operation was not a law enforcement operation because it was directly supported uh, by an external state actor, meaning uh, the state of Eritrea in the north. So you had a tandem invasion with the despotic regime of Eritrea, and at the same time, the Abi Ahmed uh, loyalist forces uh, then uh, attacked the Tigray region. And I say loyalist forces because, because uh, quite a few of the, uh, the e e ENDF, or the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, was also made up of members of the uh, Tigray ethnic group, which obviously is in the north of the country, and, uh, and, and, and it has to maintain a, a fairly sizable force, uh, as because uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea, prior to this conflict, had been uh, uh, at war often, and uh, that is why we uh, we we have seen uh, in the past uh, the uh, the ENDF or the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, which was again made up of quite a few members of the uh, Tigray region, uh, have a fairly strong force positioned in the Tigray region facing off against the Eritrean border. Uh, many of the commanders were uh, Tigrayan and many of the uh, troops were Tigrayan as well. And uh, when they canceled the elections, or they had tried to cancel the elections, uh, many of uh, the, uh, when, when the war finally kicked off or the quote-unquote law enforcement operation, uh, many of those soldiers uh, and uh, and officers then uh, defected and went over to the uh, the uh, what we now call the uh, Tigrayan uh, Defense Forces, which was also uh, it, which also existed uh, before the ongoing conflict because it was it was more of a each each region in Ethiopia has its own uh, regional uh, defense forces, more like a, a a U.S. National Guard, a reserve body of forces, and active forces that the local regions can call up for various. Uh, uh, "Quote unquote law enforcement operations and what have you." Anyway, so so there you have it. You have the Tigrayan Defense Forces facing off against the uh, the forces of the uh, B Ahmed regime uh, based in the capital of uh, Addis Ababa. Furthermore, uh, you have uh, the Aromo Liberation Army. Uh, which uh, is also uh, fighting for Aromia autonomy uh, from uh, Ethiopia as uh, as well. 
And uh, so right now you have the TDF allied with the Oromo Liberation Army and a number of other groups as uh, as well facing off against the uh, the uh, B Ahmed regime in Addis Ababa. And, and that regime is supported by different regions as well, such as the Amhara region, uh, which also has its own um, militia-type armies and then also contributes forces to the the what you would call the quote-unquote federal forces or the B loyalist forces as well. So a little complicated, but uh, again, right now, now you just think uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces versus the Abi Loyalist Formations. And then you also have the Oromo Liberation Army, which are also allied with the TDF, fighting against the Abi Loyalist Formations as uh, as well. Uh, Abi Ahmed is looking to institute a one-party unitary state uh, led by something known as the uh, Prosperity Party. Uh, again, uh, you have to wonder... Uh, how how prosperous uh, people are now looking at the uh, in terms of how effective the prosperity party is in terms of making Ethiopia prosperous. It has plunged the nation into a disastrous uh, civil war and has broken the nation apart uh, along many different uh, many different both political and uh, ethnic lines as uh, as well. So very very unfortunate. And I think if people had a redo of getting of uh, having a uh, Biamed in power back in 2018, uh, there would be uh, uh, thoughts about that now in terms of uh, is he an effective leader. And, uh, and and right now, given the state of what is happening in the country, many folks would, would, would say that he is not an effective leader and now borderline on uh, a, uh, a barbarian. <laughs> well, a lot of individuals uh, in Ethiopia would, would define him as, as such. And, uh, and there are also questions about uh, him uh, ever wanting, desiring uh, to relinquish power. Uh, it is rumored and talked about that he has uh, intentions on in staying in power for up to uh, uh, 20 to 30 years. And he has been quoted as saying uh, is, is he wants to be the longest running, uh, 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 quote unquote, uh, African leader in all of uh, Africa, like the likes of uh, Robert Mugabe and uh, and other uh, uh, sub-Saharan African despots, but uh, we'll see what happens and if that actually comes to fruition or not. But we're going to jump right in today into the uh, the current and uh, uh, battlefield updates that are taking place. Uh, we have reports, and, and again, this is much like. Uh, the uh, early operational tempo that we, we saw during the uh, Tigrayan counter-invasion after it evicted forces, uh, the uh, B-Loyalist forces from the Tigray region, and then launched that uh, rather successful counter-invasion into the Amhara region down here into the south. So right now, as I talked about before, the uh, Tigrayan defense forces are moving both to the east and west of Kobo. Uh, fighting, heavy fighting still continues. Uh, furthermore, uh, closer to this town uh, here in the, uh, it's, it, it would be uh, to the west of, uh, of Kobo. Right here is Kobo. And now to the west of uh, Kobo, you have uh, the, uh, the, the uh, town of uh, Lalibela. And uh, both uh, t the town of Lalibela and further to the north, uh, you have Sakota. Uh, we have received reports that Tigrayan uh, defense forces are now moving in towards both Lalibela and Sakota as we speak. So it will be interesting to see if, again, the Tigrayan Defense Forces makes a move on both Lalibela, Sakota, and uh, uh, seizes control of those towns, uh, much like they did in the earlier campaign when they eventually withdrew back to the Tigray region. Uh, obviously, right now, the, the world is uh, watching uh, what is happening in Ukraine. And uh, there may not be as much attention uh, to this conflict uh, as it uh, continues. The uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces were very, very close in terms of uh, continuing their march towards the capital, uh, Addis Ababa, when the U.S. State Department and other nation states put a lot of pressure 
on the uh, Tigray Defense Forces uh, not to continue all the way to the capital. Uh, so uh, we'll have to see uh, what happens, especially uh, with the uh, the Abi loyalist and the Eritrean uh, army continuing its anaconda strategy by trying to starve out the uh, Tigray region, whether there will be uh, the same amount of pressure to get the TDF to uh, stop uh, offensive operations uh, if it decides to uh, to march south towards the capital and uh, dethrone uh, Abiy Ahmed. But we'll have to watch this very, very closely and see what happen happens. Uh, but right now, again, uh, heavy fighting continues east-west of Kobo, and now we're hearing reports of uh, TDF movements towards both Sakota and Lalibela. Uh, as uh, as we speak. So we will have more information soon. Thanks for joining us. More to come. And always have a good day.